Welcome to day two. Um, this is module two of my five module class. Um, today, I hope to, I call it from organization to project because today I hope to actually um, um, cover, if you look over here, actually I, I'm hoping to cover most of uh, chapter seven, um, all of chapter eight and chapter six. So we'll be really um, going rather um, quickly through this um, and trying to get to project uh, planning at least, get that started. If not, I could push project planning till tomorrow because tomorrow we'll be concentrating on chapter five as we're doing this. So um, this morning, what we'll be doing is looking at the life cycle model framework and how that is where all the processes live. We've talked about the life cycle yesterday, but today we're going to go ahead and take it one step further. How do we actually develop a life cycle and how do we manage it? So life cycle management is one of the first uh, processes that we're going to cover. And we're finally going to go ahead and get into my chart as well. Um, I know you guys probably didn't have enough time to read all the chapters. Again, I'm hoping this will be something where you can go into my canvas, uh, read the book, do the quizzes. If you have to, maybe watch uh, one of my videos. Um, I'm hoping to put them up in a week or two um, so that you'll be able to revisit these if you feel you need to. Today, uh, this morning, we're going to cover the, a, a few processes from Chapter 7 and all of Chapter 8. So as you can see, we've made um, quite a significant progress here. Um, hopefully this highlighter works for you. Um, we're going to go ahead and uh, we already took care of the first three chapters yesterday. We took care of uh, going through uh, mainly the terms and definitions for all the appendices. Notice that um, Appendix E is still up and running and it will be for the entire class because Appendix E is where the input and output descriptions are, and it's where I pull them in. Um, we're, this morning, we're going to go ahead and start covering um, Chapter 7, and then in the afternoon, and also do Chapter 8, and we'll finish Chapter 7 this afternoon. One thing I should uh, make you aware of is every chapter has kind of an intro that's that's not part of these sections. So when I say chapter seven, it's like one or two pages and then chapter or section seven, and then section 7.1 gets into the processes. The same up here, technical, uh, even tailoring and some of cross, uh, not cross cutting, tailoring agreement processes and the technical processes all have intro chapters. So be aware of that when I start, I may get into the intro chapter before I even get into the processes. Ah, my chart's here, finally. Um, so hopefully you guys got to be able to go out and get the 11 by uh, 17 version of the chart um, so that you can look at it as we're, we're talking. Uh, if you print it clearly, you can see it. Of course, the PDF is there. You can always pull that up and do what I do, you know, um, you know, uh, zoom in as you as you're studying and things like that. There we go. We're finally at my chart. And what I'm going to do from now on, I'm going to actually talk about the processes, but I'm going to start at um, chapter seven here with the actual <clears throat> life cycle model. That's going to be the first thing we're going to talk about mainly because we had a whole chapter, chapter three, that talked about life cycle modeling. And it's about the life cycle model and how important it is. And you don't get back to it again until you get to chapter seven. So I pushed that up. So it's one of the first things we talk about. Uh, we're gonna end on the last class on Friday. It'll probably be about noon-ish. I'm hoping to be finished. Uh, we'll go ahead and have your disposal which is the very last process in the technical, uh, uh, technical processes. All right, and I'm going backwards again. So the way I want you to think of my um, 
chart, every time you look at it, is the center is that famous system engineering V. And of course, when you, um, when you actually look at it, it is the V, right? And, and actually, it does a pretty good job of showing things from the left side going to the right side as you're looking at it. Um, but that's where the system engineering V's in, and that's where all the technical processes. Now those technical processes don't exist in a vacuum. Um, there's always a project that it's part of. So because it's part of a project, that, and the project's objective is probably to create the system the technical processes are being used for. So the tech uh, project envelops the technical process with what these are called technical management processes. If you look at them, they're, they're actually program management processes. If you were to look at them from PMI, um, has anybody um, worked with the Program Management Institute? Um, uh, some of you actually have some program management experience. And um, so you know what I'm talking about. When we get to those, it'll be fairly simple for you to um, understand what we're um, talking about, but we're going to look at it from a program, uh, from a system engineering standpoint, and how do these technical manage pro management processes uh, support what we're trying to do with these technical processes. Good case in point is like the technical management process of configuration management. It, it helps enable you to, to keep track of all the data you're creating, you know, and the baselines you're, you're making as you're going through the design process or even during the verification and validation. All that gets captured, right? So it's a separate process, but it supports these technical processes. So you'll find these technical processes kind of evoking these technical management processes anytime they need to, be it risk management, information management, right? Quality assurance, you know, they'll pull on these as necessary. And that's why I kind of envelop the technical processes to make that work. Now, why does a project exist? Mainly because there's an agreement with another organization. So um, the organization says, I have now this contract with somebody, I'm trying to produce something for them, so I better make a project and that project should have technical management processes that enable my technical processes uh, to occur. So I can create that thing that my agreement said I would create for that other organization. So it's important for you to think about uh, this in that respect. So one thing I did, and I think I talked to you yesterday about this, is um, if Federal Express said I need to actually talk and get a new airplane, uh, then maybe I should talk to Boeing and I get an agreement with them. Do you remember me talking about that? Is that true? I did that. I have another class I'm teaching, so you guys, <laughs> I don't want you to think I'm, I, I'm losing it, but um, I'm not sure what I told them and that, what I'm telling you. So um, that was a great example because Federal Express has a need right and they need an airplane and boeing can make that airplane so boeing goes into an agreement here and they go ahead and create a project and they follow these technical processes in order to create the plane um, so it's a great way uh, to do the analogy of what we're looking at here okay so we're going to go ahead and again every section uh from you know uh, four through uh, eight all have this intro aspect. So we're going to go ahead and uh, look at the intro aspect. So we're going to cover chapter seven right here. All right. So uh, this shows you the sections we're going to cover, the various processes. So the project enabling processes are, of course, the purview of the organization itself. Uh, that's why one of the reasons it, I show a big ball that says org, because <laughs> it's the organization that's kind of putting this all together. And actually, 15288 has a good expression uh, about what the enabling processes are uh, for. And actually, I think I have um, this right here. We'll do it this way so you can 
see it in relationship to all the organizational um, processes we're going to be talking about. Um, I put them all on the left. So you almost want to look at this organization as one of the leaves. It creates a project, but can make, create many projects. So you almost want to 3D this thing and see several projects, but there's one organization. Although this organization's work with other organizations, so you get that scenario happening. But the organizational processes, project enabling processes, ensure that the organization has the capability to either acquire or supply products. Now it's interesting, or services, they say both. Um, it's interesting that they talk about um, acquiring as well as supplying. Now, most of what we're looking at here is like almost from the supplier uh, point of view, but theoretically you could have this uh, for Federal Express and they have their own organization and maybe their own technical processes for what they do in terms of providing their service. Um, and we're just Boeing, all they're doing is providing the airplane. But Boeing, uh, Federal Express has to do all what they do. Um, now, in order to make this work, the organization will initiate support and control projects in order to make it work. Again, it's thinking of Federal Express and Boeing. Boeing makes a special project for the cargo airplane uh, that they have to create for Federal Express. And so Boeing will provide these resources and the infrastructure necessary to support the project. And of course, the project exists to create that system.